Okay, so in the last video here, oh, so say, welcome back to unit three, right? So, uh, gravity, gravity and circular motion. So in the last video, we talked, what is gravity? What is it defined as? Now we're going to talk about universal gravitation. And again, this is going to come from our good old friend, Isaac Newton, right? So Newton doesn't, didn't necessarily discover gravity, but one of the things that he discovered is that gravity is universal, right? It applies everywhere in the universe, but applies it with different factors, okay? So if you think about the statement, what goes up must come down, right? Everyone thinks that that's just simple common sense. Well, the common sense tells us that it's this concept of gravity or gravitation. So Isaac Newton certainly was not the first scientist to propose that gravity existed. What he was really the first person to propose is that gravity was universal, right? And he developed an equation for it. So the force of gravity between any two objects with masses M1 and M2 separated by distance R is attractive, right? So it's going to pull things together and has a magnitude F and is given by the equation F equals G M1 M2 over R squared. Now, something to note is that capital G is not lowercase g, okay? Capital G has its own value and it's what we call the universal gravitation constant and it's simply 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th newtons times meters squared per kilogram squared. And oftentimes when you do a problem, you don't write the unit. So you, that newton times meter squared per kilogram squared, that's just a little bit of an informality in my, in my opinion. Okay. Because again, we're not going to write the equation out. But the way to think about it is that we know G has to have units of, of they have to have these units because what you see, oh, sorry, blanked it, right? I have mass times mass. That's why, and I, if I need, if I know that my answer is going to be a force, I need that to cancel out. So there's my kilogram squared. But then I also have, right, R squared matches up to M squared, right, to cancel that out. So you do have to note that your mass has to be in kilograms, and then your distance has to be given in, um, meters, right? Because that's the unit for G. All right. So something to recall is that gravity is the weakest of the fu fundamental forces because it gets weaker with distance. And it's what we call an inverse square law, right? And let me write that equation. Going to run out of some room here. So I guess I'll have to write it a little bit above, Right, so here's the equation again, F equals G M1 M2 over R squared. So this is the reason why we call it an inverse square law, okay? And what happens is that it gets weaker faster because of that squared term, right? And so in the previous slide, we had our Earth, and we had these vectors, right, pointed at it, and they all will have the same value at that position. But if I go out a little bit further right? My arrow is not going to be as big because of my R squared relationship, right? So all those blue arrows would have the same value, okay? But it would be smaller than the red arrows, okay? Now, in the next, or sorry, and if a mass experiences gravitational forces or it'll, what happens is it's going to experience gravitational forces from everywhere, right? It's going to try to be pulled towards everything, and it, the law follows what's called the law of superposition, right? And so what does that mean? Does that mean some value or some objects will experience greater forces based on what's acting around them, okay? It's kind of one of the reasons why the universe is the way it is, right? And so here's a quick conceptual example. Um, it says here, each of the three equally spaced and equally massive objects shown below experiences gravitational forces due to the other two objects. Rank the objects in order of increasing magnitude of the total gravitational force they experience, and then indicate ties where appropriate, okay? So the way to think about it, at position A, right, A is gonna be pulled towards B, 
and it's going to be pulled towards C, right? At C, it's going to be pulled towards B, right? And then, But it's also going to be pulled towards A. So this is like F of A, right? B on A, F of C on A. Here's A on C, and then here's B on C. But something to note, right, is that, let me go with a different color so you, B is going to have, right, because of Newton's third law, it's going to have these equal but opposite. So F of B on A, F of C on B, right? So that's like positive negative. So if we look at it, A and C are going to have the same value, right, Because they're or same magnitude because they're experiencing essentially the same forces due to Newton's third law, right? And then that's going to be greater than B because, in fact, B is going to be experiencing zero force. Okay. And what you can do, right, and I, I'll show you. Here's a little bit better, better picture, right? Here's our object at A. So it's experiencing F of B on A. Then it's going to be experiencing F of C on A. And now here's B right? F of A on B, or sorry, that should be C, right? Because remember, it's an attractive force, so it's going to try to pull it, right? And then you got F of A on B, and then out here at C, we basically have the same two forces, right? F of C on B, or B on C, and you have F of A on C, right? So this force is equal to that force. This force equals that force, right? Or that force, and those two forces go together, right? And so as you can see, these two, or say these four forces all add up to each other, right? And then these inside here would be, would simply cancel out. Okay, so let's look at how that equation is gonna be used, right? Um, so here you go. You have a girl taking her walk on a on a sunny beach, right? Find the force of gravity between the 45 kilogram girl and her 11 kilogram dog when they are separated by one meter. And then what is the force if her dog decides to run away? And now they're separated by five meters. Okay. So part A, we're going to use universal gravitation, right? G times the mass of the dog, right? Times the mass of the girl divided by the distance between them, right? And remember, G has a value of 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 newtons per, times meters squared per kilogram squared, okay? So I'm going to plug in my numbers now. 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th times the dog's mass, which is 11, times her mass, which is 45, divided by 1 squared okay and i wanted to point this out make sure that you do square that that um that distance between them okay so now i type it into my calculator and we find that the force is 3.38 times 10 to the negative eighth newtons okay so again we're not gonna have to manipulate this formula to find a distance or to find masses all we're gonna simply do is straight plug in those values okay now part b now the dog runs away, okay? So let's apply uh, factors of change here, right? So we're gonna plug in a one for everything that stays constant, and then we're gonna plug in the factor of change for the one that changed, okay? So what does that mean? Well, G is gonna stay the same. We still have the dog and the girl, right? We're still using this equation here, but instead of actually plugging in those values, we're gonna do our factors of change method. So my numerator stays the same. It's the same dog, same girl, right? And that G value is going to be, it's a constant, so that doesn't change. But what changed, right, was the distance between them. I want to do that in a different color. So you can see this is the value that changes, right? So five meters is five times greater than the one meter okay remember it's a factor not we're not adding or subtracting we're a factor is multiplying okay so what does that mean the force now between them is 125th of what it experienced before 
So now all I have to do is multiply the 3.3 .3 times 10 to the negative eighth, the answer from part A, divided by or multiply it by 1 25th or divide by 25, right? And you're going to see that the force is 1 25th times, right, less, okay? Um, something else that you can do, you can just, I mean, we did the factors of change method. You can also just simply plug in your numbers, right? The, again, the numerator stays the same but the bottom becomes five squared, okay? And that's what you would get, um, that 1.32 times 10 to the negative ninth, okay? So this really ends the gravitation part of, the, of this unit, okay? The next thing we're gonna focus on is centripetal acceleration.